you say that healing is easy, fun, and fast, and we're taught the complete opposite you right. know, uh, with disease. It's, you know, some are incurable, some you have to go through crazy surgeries, uh, drugs, so it's, it's anything but fun, it's anything but fast, and it's anything but easy. So how can you help us believe that? You know, when I was a boy, a little boy, I had no information about anything. I just knew that if I asked God or the divine or whoever that is to help me and I trusted that would happen and I believed that would happen and I didn't try to do anything on my own, it would happen. And so we can do the same thing if we just get out of the way. So when people continually think about what's wrong with them or Google what they've been told or keep talking about their disease, their oncologist, their drugs, their chemo, their, they keep owning it that's what they get if they would just step to the side and say, please help me now and let it happen, it will. We just were taught something very different than that. That's my opinion. If people get diagnosed with cancer and whether they were faithful or not, they're like, they feel abandoned by God or the divine that you speak of. So how is it possible when you feel so alone and you feel like a victim how can you walk someone through that feels abandoned, angry, frustrated, sure. and, 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 and vulnerable? So what I've learned is that if you talk to someone that's had cancer, they will tell you that the greatest gift they were ever given was the diagnosis of cancer. Because it changes everything about you and it gives you the opportunity to actually let go and trust and believe. And it teaches you so much. You know, my wife had cancer. And she said, no, I'm fine. And it made the doctors crazy. And that was 25 years ago. And she's had no recurrence, even though they told her she'd be on chemo until she died. And so what I see with people is, yes, you have the experience of having cancer. You know, God gave you that experience to change something about your diet, the way you lived, the way you thought. Everything about you gave you that opportunity that's what it is. It's an opportunity to change everything. It's not an opportunity to die. But we've been taught that cancer is a death sentence. And so first you're tortured, then you die. And that's not what you need. You know, the only difference between people I see that have a complete remission and don't are the ones who continue to walk around with, I have cancer, I am going to die. They do that. If you go, I've had cancer, check the box, I don't have to have it anymore, I've had that experience, God, show me another one. They're the ones that, that stay alive. It's really pretty simple, but it's very difficult because we've been trained otherwise. I love that. Just to clarify, your wife is married to a remarkable healer. <laughs> and I had nothing to do with her cancer. Okay. She, she did that when she was a teenager on her own. She just got it. She figured it out and said, no, I don't need this anymore. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And she's fine. So you talk a lot about thinking differently. And I know when we brought the people to be healed in, you said, all I ask is for you to let go of your story. Can you explain the mental component of disease and, and how to transcend that? Sure. So what I know is what you think about and what you talk about is what you create for yourself. That's not anything new. I'm not creating a new thought, right? But it's true. So if you decide right now that you are healthy and the rest of the stuff isn't part of your past anymore, then it will change everything. Your body creates 500 million new cells every day. Did you know that? 500 million new cells every day. And what we do is our new cells come in and go, hi Kelly, what would you like us to do today? And we say, I have cancer. I have fibromyalgia. I don't feel well. And those 500 million cells go, okay. Every two days, it's a billion cells. Every year, your whole body has been completely replaced. Why don't you stay healthy? Because we keep telling it what we don't want. So it's like stop telling your body what you don't want and start telling your body what you do want and see what happens. It's really so simple, but we've been taught, you know, completely different.
I totally understand what you're saying, and I, I believe it a million percent. But uh, it's so hard when you're in it and you're suffering and you're feeling the pain, and it's so hard to think positive and think I am healthy when you have tumors in your body or you're nauseous all the time or you, you're too tired to get out of bed. You know, so I just want to figure out how to, for someone who is in pain and suffering, how to start pivoting their mind and, and how to push through it or, or is it a total surrender? See, we've been taught that being sick is bad, having the flu is bad. We've been taught that having pain is bad when sometimes having the flu is actually clearing your body of the toxic energy that's trying to get out. Or pain is your body's changing and growing and healing. But we think pain is bad. And so immediately we go into the story about why we're in pain. It's bad. And those 500 million new cells get told that it's bad. When actually, in my work, you might have pain tomorrow because we did some deep work on your neck today. And it's because your neck is healing. But your brain is going to tell you, oh, it didn't work. Something's wrong with my neck. Or two weeks ago, I was flat out sick, me, the healer guy, sick. I couldn't work. I couldn't think. I couldn't do anything. And my brain is trying to tell me that, what have I done? There's there something wrong with me. And what actually was happening was I was being purged of old energy so I could make room for new energy. So a lot of times, us being sick is actually an upgrade but we think of it as a downgrade. See, it's all Again, it's, it's the crazy. Story, it's the story you tell about pain. Yeah, it's the story exactly. you tell about being sick. It's like, oh, you know, I didn't go to enough therapy. I still am dealing with this anger from my childhood. Or, shoot, I ate the cupcakes. Or, oops, I had a glass of wine. You know, like. And you see all of that judgment that we have about the glass of wine or not enough therapy or whatever it is is pushing that energy back into our body that's creating the density, which is creating the blockage, which is creating the stagnation, which is creating more stuff for the brain to connect with, so it can mess with you to keep you in that place. If you just decide that it really doesn't matter and just let go, it's quite amazing. It's like jumping out of a plane. It's like I'm free. Ultimately, it comes down to total trust in a divine, good, loving power that is much more intelligent than ourselves. Exactly. And things are just going to work through us, and we just have to listen and surrender and trust in the, the bigger picture. And see, we're always trying to negotiate with God. We're always trying to say, I'll do this if you'll do that. Or if you do this, I'll do that. Instead of just going, I let it all go, thank you, and being free. But that's so easy that we can't do it. But when you do it, you saw it today. You saw when people just got out of the way that in seconds, everything in their body changed. And it wasn't me doing anything. It was them allowing the divine to come into them fully and be present. That's it. It's really simple. There's certain diagnoses that are like tragic and grave. I mean, at this point, everything is very serious to the person that, you know, is, is getting it. So whether it's cancer, or, but can the human body fully recover and heal itself from any condition, even the worst? I've seen it happen. Um, but there's that also the piece called fate and destiny. Sometimes people are supposed to have that experience and there's nothing you can do except help them be more comfortable in that experience. So sometimes you can't, you can't do it. There's nothing you can do, you know. And sometimes it's amazing what's possible. And so in the work that I do, I used to take it really personally because I thought that if I didn't completely change somebody, it was my fault. And it was hard. But now I understand that sometimes it's, it's your path, it's your destiny, it's your fate, it's what's supposed to happen with you. Your soul needed to do that to learn something and that's just the way it is, but you'll come back around and have a much different life next time. So sometimes the ALS is that ultimate purging of all of your karma and all of your past life stuff and everything that you've been carrying around. You said, okay, I want it over with this time. And the only way that it could really happen was something that seemed really awful, but in the end, it cleared them and freed them of all this old stuff they've been carrying around so they can come back or it cleared their generation, or it has a lot deeper meaning than people think. We look at the suffering and think it's bad, and yet it's actually creating a much greater gift for 
everybody. And you can't prove that. I can't prove that. Yeah. But and there's is, people that don't believe in that. There's people that don't believe in any of that stuff. And that's okay. Yeah. You know, um, I didn't used to believe in God until I started doing this work. And there's no question to me now because I see it every day, just like you guys saw it today. And there's no question there's something. Call it whatever you want, but there's something there that's, that's just un, unexplainable. You know, and there's no trick. It's just there. It's just being in the presence of God and letting it come through you. And I'm not a religious person. I don't go to church. You know, I, I pray more than the most people do, and I'm in the presence of this energy all the time, so I just, I'm just there. I don't have to go there. I'm there. People, somebody said to me today, how do you prepare for this? I'm like, I'm there. And once you're there, you never want to go anywhere else. And it's not that I'm this religious guy, because I don't know what that means. I just know that I'm connected to the divine, and there's no other place to be. What happens when someone is sitting in front of you, you know a limited amount of what ails them, you know, how does it feel? What do you see? Are you, in, is it a voice in your head telling you move their spine? Is it, is it just, is it pure light? Like what do you, what is the, your, what are you experiencing? All of the above. So when somebody sits down in front of me or if I'm on the phone with somebody or whatever, what, and I don't, remember I'm not doing anything. I know that the only reason I'm getting to see this is because they, whoever that is, God, the divine, wants to keep me interested because I'm one of those people that wants to know what's going on, right? So you sit down in front of me. There's like a quick scan of your body, and this all happens in less than two seconds probably. There's a scan of your body. I see the areas of density. I see the areas of disease. I see where we're going. But again, I'm not going to do anything about it. I just get to see it. And then I literally just kind of take a breath. And I, if you notice today, I spent a lot of time looking outside. I wasn't looking at the person because I don't want to be distracted by what Rob sees because it's not about what I see. It's about what is being done. So I get to see what's going on with you. And then the rest of it is completely out of my control. I have no thought about putting my hand on your neck or on your lower back or wherever it is. None of that comes into my head. My body goes into this automatic, goes wherever it's supposed to go. And I'm just watching it do it without any thought or any pre-idea of why I'm doing it or anything. When I start to question it, like, you really want me to put my hand there? Everything stops. So I just completely stay out of the way and let it happen. It's, it's pretty wild. And then I see everything changing in your body. And I see what's happening. Like, I said to you, you got a new spine. I saw your spine being redone. I'm not doing it. I'm watching another energy force do it, or if somebody's liver or whatever it is. I just see it happen, and it's that fast. I mean, it happens faster than you can even think about it happening, but it just, I'm watching. I'm just, a, I'm, it's like I'm the observer. I'm not the participant. I'm the observer. The only reason that they need a human, I think, is because a human energy has to be able to r relate with other human energy. If you take energy from a different type of being, it doesn't have that personal ability to kind of understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so they need a human being, me or anybody, to connect because it's on a human basis, not a out of realm kind of basis. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know if that's true. I just know that that's what I've realized over doing this. Yeah, it'd be really awkward if like a zebra came up and put his <laughs> yeah, palm exactly. in it. Belief and expectation, how big of a role does that play in here? Have you worked on people that are complete, think you're quackery and they're like, oh, bring it, try me out. And have you shifted that or does the person have to be totally open? That's a really good question. I get a lot of people who will identify them as complete skeptics and think that I'm a bunch of whatever at these uh, things that I do. And I welcome that because they're always the best ones, right? And, and the reason I do what I do the way I do it, like what we did today in front of people, whether it's in front of 10 people or 1,000 people, is because when you see it happen, you pretty much can't have any other opinion. I mean, when you see what happens, what you saw happen today, if you were sitting there as a skeptic, even a skeptic would have a really difficult time putting this into some other category. But it does have an important thing, but I work with a lot of people who come in with no belief, and all of a sudden they're like, whoa, 
You know, so what I've noticed is the energy tends to be so powerful that it'll break through that. And if you sat here and absolutely did not want me to affect you in any way, even if I completely changed you, you would believe that I didn't affect you in any way. And I've seen that happen. Because some people need the, the drugs, they need the attention, they need all the stuff that they're getting from whatever they have, and there's nothing is going to take that away. And that's okay. You know, I honor that because that's you get to do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. So it, it's yeah. it's interesting to see. Yeah, that's uh, Marianne Williamson is another person, and she said it's all at the level of consciousness that you're at, right? So mm-hmm. some people need the drugs for them to believe that the healing is going on in their body. Right. You know, other people have a judgment about the drugs, so they're not going to work for them. Unless there's anything else you want to talk about, I'm just going to ask you one more question. Okay. What is the one takeaway message that you can give to everybody out there to either prevent disease, to deal with whatever they're dealing with? What is the one takeaway message that you can you want to share with everybody? Wow. Um, I think it would be that you are the one who's responsible for your body. You have the right to have your own opinion of that. And so what I see happen all the time is somebody else gives you their opinion of what's wrong with you and you adapt somebody else's opinion as truth and you forget that you have the right to your own opinion and you have complete control over your body and so everybody can have their opinion and honor somebody else's opinion but what I say is don't let somebody else take a label that says I have something and put it on you and you walk around proud of the fact that you have something right If that's not what you want, take the label off. It's your body. You're responsible for it. Remember those 500 million cells and think about what you want, not what you don't want. Because what you think about is what you get. What you think about is what you're telling those 500 million cells every day. They're going, Mom, what do you want us to do? And you're like, be sick. And they're like, okay. I mean, why else would people not be in perfect health and their bodies being regenerated every year why is it that they don't get better? Because we keep telling our body what we don't want or what was somebody else told us we had and creating the same thing over and over and over. So of all the things that you may have heard, the one thing that can be proven by science is that every day you have 500 million new cells coming into your body. And that every day knowing that you're the one responsible for programming those cells. And so in the morning when you wake up, you say, Good morning, 500 million new cells. I'm so grateful that you're here, and I am healthy. I am happy. I am abundant. That's your job. Thank you very much. And keep doing that and let those new cells merge with other cells and bring that through your whole body. That's that's the one greatest gift I think anybody can have because nothing in that can be disproven because every day we know that that happens scientifically. So whatever people want to say about that, my question is, since you know that that is true, why do you stay in the past? Because we keep talking about the past and not about what's happening today.